Hey, what's up? Daryl here in the JCR Garage. I'm finishing up this Adams Garage you have to install on Project Ascender. We're actually getting Ascender ready uh, for EJS a little early because we have a super busy March finishing Crusader. So this is the 1350 drive shaft from Adams. We had a 13, uh, kind of a combination. There was a 1350 at the uh, yoke end and then a 1310 or a 1330, I can't remember, at the transfer case end when we put the rock, or when we had the rock track in the factory Rubicon case. But we installed this fancy Atlas two speed just recently, so we had to uh, change drive shafts, unfortunately. So we went with Adams again. Uh, we have Adams on every Jeep here at JCR Off Road. We've yet to break one, which is crazy because I drive Jeeps, you know, rough in the parking lot, even let alone off road. So this is a 1350, 1350 CV style yoke right there because we have tons of room uh, now with the Atlas compared to the uh, new venture, I guess they are now. And then a 1310, I'm sorry, 1350 at the yoke end here. And then we have the same in the rear, uh, 1350 Adams at the yoke, and then a 1350 CV uh, flange style kind of up there. Let me grab this, this light here, and we can go on a tour of Project Ascender, an under, underbody upskirt tour. So this is the Front Terra 60. Oh, this thing is fantastic. We went with the 67 inch WMS to WMS and an ARB locker. Uh, of course, RCVs in there. We run RCVs and everything there. Just absolutely fantastic. This axle, I love these. I love these Terra 60s. They go together awesome. They're very well thought out. They are built right here in America, which is super cool. Just great axles all around. And then we're running Terra Flexes, heavy duty tie rod and drag link and this is uh the jk style ends i believe but it's just whatever size matches uh this axle width a redneck ram from west texas off-road has been fantastic for us uh, cameron did a little bit of lettering on there but yeah this is great turns those 40s without any problem whatsoever speaking of 40s we are running nitto trail grapplers in 40 inch by 13 5 17 uh, wrapped on some trail ready bead locks. I love these bead locks. Uh, it's kind of hard to see in pictures sometimes, but it's satin black on the wheel and then it is gunmetal on the ring. And I, the contract, the contrast, sorry, just looks fantastic. So we love those. Terraflex lockouts are really, really cool design. They're kind of loosely based on the old Spicer lockouts, which were some of the best ones. So super happy to see that. Uh, in the rear, we have a CRD. Full float Terra 60, same dimensions. We have our truss there for the long arm. And the cool thing about the CRDs is they use factory JK backing plates, and then any of the TerraFlex big brake kits, obviously, for the JK will work on there. So, got a TerraFlex big brake kit basically with, with parking brakes, and then you can run these uh, cables here. Just factory parking brake cables. So, you have parking brakes on a full float Dana 60 which is super cool. And if you're not super familiar what full float does, if you see this right here, this is actually the axle shaft. So you can unbolt these eight bolts and pull the axle shaft right out, swap a new one in if you need to. The cool part about that is all the weight of the vehicle is held on, or I'm sorry, is held up by the bearings and the spindle. So that means that this axle shaft does not have to carry the load of the vehicle. So any bouncing load besides the, you know, besides the force of inertia is going to affect this axle shaft a lot less. So all the axle shaft has to do is keep this big, excuse me, keep this big 40 turning. So that's a great design. That's why full fold axles are so cool and super strong. On a JK, you'll see a lot of times even with aftermarket shafts with semi flow, you'll bend the flange if you really beat on them. Then you're driving down the road and you hear that whoosh, 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 because it's rubbing against your brakes. But on a full float, you have to work, I mean, you have to work insanely hard to bend a spindle. So then it's, it's bigger, bigger axle time. So full floats are super cool. If you didn't know how they work, that's how they work. You can actually put a lock out here if you wanted to. You could do a double spline axle shaft. And for whatever reason, if you wanted to, they make Dana 60 lockouts here and you could have a rear lockouts if you wanted. Uh, that's what else? Oh, the rock crawler long arm 
We've been running this Pro Stretch Rock Collar Long Arm for a little over you know, a year now. Same ends, same links. These are the full aluminum links from Rock Collar. Uh, they're a little beat up, but they've really done a good job for us. But recently we upgraded to coilovers. So we're running the Rock Crawler Prodigy coilovers. Really excited to see those out on the rocks. Pete has them in his Jeep and he loves them. So uh, what, what you can do if you see there's two rates, there's the upper rate and the lower rate for the coils and there's a slider between them, bet between them. And if you look, you can see there's a little slider right there that can thread up and down. So what you can do is you can thread that down and then this slider right here will contact it at a certain part in the travel. So you'll transition from this lower rate upper coil to this higher rate lower coil. So you can actually change how the suspension, you can change the coils, the spring rate rather, as the suspension cycles, which is pretty neat. And that's all adjustable. So you can suit that to however you like it. So that's cool. Uh, this is Rock Crawler's cross member or skid plate. We've been running that forever. Same old, same old. Uh, this is the MagnaFlow exhaust kit, and that goes all the way from the factory manifold here around. This is a factory cat or a factory style cat. And then we have a MagnaFlow 14 inch stainless muffler, I believe. Kind of snuck up there with a little bit of grease on it from the old CV. And custom stainless piping besides that, so. A triangulated four link in the back of a TJ gets very tight. So you can see there's not a ton of room there, but we got it snuck around there. It works at full compression. No problems with that. Polished MagnaFlow tip kind of hiding, tucked up in there. We'll see how long it lasts. I'm guessing it'll be okay, but you never know. This is our new dagger rear bumper for the short wheelbase. No hitch, no provisions for a tire carrier, but awesome clearance. Super duper low profile. You can see the breakover on that is fantastic. And then our short wheelbase gas tank skid. This just bolts right over your factory tank skid. So it's ridiculously easy to install. Super strong, easy to install. These limit straps are from bar tacked and they are very beefy. They're four ply, I guess call it, all stitched together with some heat treated 4130 tabs because insane amounts of overkill, but they don't stretch very much. And with all this weight on here, that's good. So a lot of people don't know that bar tack actually makes limit straps. They're very, very nice pieces. What else is going on? ARBs, front and rear in this. I may have mentioned that already. And I think that's pretty much it for a tour of this guy. That's our inner fender kit that really looks nice. Cleans everything up. Oh, we're running a Terraflex trail only sway bar. So they do this in a trail rate, which is single rate, and they do a dual rate which is a bar inside of a bar with a lockout mechanism that goes on the driver's side. We have that on real hop. We drive that on the street a little more than this, but yeah, this trail rate is really good. Yeah, I think that is it. So, you know, thanks for hanging out with me on a tour of a sender and we should be good to go and ready to hit the red rock. And then I can start or well, finish Crusader, I guess, all next month. So thanks for watching and we will talk to you very soon.